Hello there, this is another one of my metal detecting videos. This is actually a two location hunt. First hunt, I am hunting solo on a building site. Prior to it being torn to bits, I've got a good friend who's doing the work and he gave me a call, said you might want to check this location out. So I went down and checked it out. You'll see how I get on. Second location is with Tommy Turbo and this is part two of our competition. So we went to the mansion site that I've got and we bashed that. Unfortunately it was very difficult going, high grass absolutely pelting down with rain and cold and I swear you can see my breath at some point in this video. And this is the middle of the English summer. So without further ado let's get on with the first hunt. This is in Hexham. So this is on a building site. Uh, I use the E-Track first with the 13 inch coil and then I switch to the Deus because it gets mighty mighty trashy well it looks like we've got the first coin in this nightmarish place and it's a ship half penny pre-decimal half penny 1939 that's George the sixth that's the first one hopefully there'll be some more coins with any luck Now I've just been told that this property behind me, which you probably can't see, oh you can just see it, just up there. It's quite a big house, apparently it's been here since the 1700s, there was an adjoining stable block. Where I'm lying down here now, used to be a tennis court, it was also used as a school during the war. It's got quite a lot of history. Now even above all the noise, you're possibly going to be able to hear this. reading a solid 12.42 both ways and according to the e-track it's about six inches deep so I'm very hopeful about this one. It's in here somewhere. And it looks like a coin so I'm going to bring the camera a little bit closer. I was kind of hoping this was going to be silver, but it isn't. It is another pre-decimal though. Pre-decimal penny. This is in beautiful condition. Pretty much like that other one. Really well preserved. I think the soil here is extremely kind to them. The soil's probably kinder than I am, giving it a good old rub with my fingers. But I think you'll be shocked when you see the preservation of this coin. <laughs> I've well and truly polished it up. It's a George V penny. There's Britannia on the back and that's 1921. That is in absolutely beautiful condition. It's just developed that lovely dark green patina but it's got good detail. There's no scabbiness on it and as far as old pennies go it's a very good one. Hey, it's not silver but it's another coin. And it's another pre-decimal half pence. Pre-decimal halfpenny. And that one again is in unbelievable condition. Look at that. George V. 1920. Another beautiful old copper coin. Oh, but what I do know is I've got about 10 feet, which is approximately 3 meters worth of path behind me there uh, left to detect and that's really this area pretty much done with the e-track I have got a little bit of time so I'm gonna go over the spots where I found the coins and the path with the Deus but I'm gonna use the smaller coil I'm gonna use the 9 inch coil if it's charged up I know my 11's charged so I may have to use the 11 but either way I'm gonna get to the top of here with the e-track and then use the Deus in the areas which were productive well those signals that I thought were very good before turned out to be deep iron. So I'm going to give up with the E-Track, have a quick go with the Deus. Well, the Deus had plenty of charge in the 9-inch coil, 
So that's what I've put on and to be honest in the last half an hour it's been a real struggle to get a diggable signal. I found uh, the end of a zipper that you'd hang on to to pull your zip up and down in a place I'd hunted with the e-track and in this hole here where I found the first half penny there's something of interest that the e-track didn't like. I knew that I was digging the penny from a contaminated area and there was another bouncy signal which I ignored because it was all over the place and it wasn't very strong. The DS actually gave a very good signal of 78, 79, quite a stable signal. Uh, and in here we've got a tiny little pistol musket ball. There you go. So that's the oldest find of the day. And that was out of a hole that I had already dug and I actually ignored that signal with the e-track. So that fills me with hope for the last half hour with the Deus. Having an absolute hell of a job with the Deus. See all this burnt stuff? That's all from fires, there's bits of coke, little bits of coal and everything in it and it's just freaking out constantly. I've reduced the sensitivity a little bit and also set it in tracking and the tracking seems to work pretty well. I've just found one coin here, which is a modern penny, which gave a lovely clean tone that the e-track didn't pick up. The e-track did pick up a deep bit of iron right next to it, in here, but it didn't pick up this. So I did manage to find one coin with the Deus that I didn't find with the E-Track. That said, I am using the 9-inch coil with the Deus and I was using the 13 with the E-Track. Well, some people might look back at that footage and say, that was a crap hunt. I actually think it was a good hunt. I love to find just anything decent in amongst trash in difficult conditions. So to me, that was a real result. I'd love to do it once that topsoil gets scraped off, so hopefully I'll be back to that site and there will be some better finds there. On with the competition, this has got minimal filming because the weather was so atrocious, my camera got absolutely soaked, in fact I got absolutely soaked, I rather stupidly didn't take any waterproofs whatsoever. Tommy was dressed from head to toe in waterproofs, so he was lovely and dry, I was soaking. I was using the e-track with the 18 inch coil so it was a big lad and he was using the XP Deus with a 13 inch coil and this is how we got on. Unfortunately I didn't get any footage of Tommy's hunts because he was miles away from me but we got together and did a round up at the end. Apologies if the picture isn't too clear there, the camera is absolutely soaking but apparently it is waterproof. This weather's putting it to the test. I'm out again with Tommy and we're having part two of the competition. I know he's already got two coins and it's absolutely hammering down. The field we were in was like this high in grass. Absolutely terrible. So we've come into the wood. Tommy's somewhere, he's gone. I don't know where he's gone. He's already found two coins and I have found absolutely nothing but here I've got something on my bucket list. And I am absolutely over the moon with this. Tommy can keep his coins. But what we have here, unless he's found something truly awesome, is going to blow his finds out of the water. Little cannonball. Really heavy as well, I think it's lead. What an awesome find that is. Absolutely awesome. Well, it looks like the first coin. It was given a 1241 reading on the E-Track. Uh, and that's a Threpney bit. Not a silver one, unfortunately. But it's my first coin, so it's a good one. That's a bit better. That's what I'm talking about. Owl Penny. I was reading 1241. It's in pretty bad condition. Whose is that one? Oh, it's quite modern, that. George the Sixth. I'm not even going to bother cleaning that up. It's a mess. Looks like a little half penny of some sort. Yeah, that's exceptionally worn, but it's a half penny, possibly Victorian. Oh, 
it's absolutely pouring down with rain now but I've started hitting coins uh, and there's one in the coin ball looks like a half penny no oh, it's quite a modern one ship half penny from 1953 Queen Elizabeth II last dig of the day we've got a pound coin and a penny together oh look at that hell of an imprint there and there's also something else in the hole as well <laughs> oh, what your spades knackered. If this comes down to numbers, I think Tommy's knackered because there's another pound coin on top of a ten pence. <laughs> well, if it, if, if it does come down to numbers, that's a lucky find that like. Well, you've definitely got more artifacts than me. I didn't even find a buckle or a button or anything. Well, I got more coins, but you got more artifacts. What's the best coins, or what's that? It's, can it's cannonball. That's not a cannonball. Well, yeah, it is. It's a lead one. They made cannonballs out of lead, did they? Well, yeah, back in the day, they did. Yeah. Are you sure? Aye, of course. <laughs> they did. Lead ones are rarer than the iron ones. Oh, really? Honestly. Okay. I swear, that's, that's, that is a cannonball. Something on my bucket list. It's definitely lead, like, isn't it? Oh, it weighs a ton, like, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It's heavy, like. Yeah. Get in there! <laughs> uh, see, I don't know if that's, like, a good thing to find or not, to be honest. Oh, honestly, it's mint. I've been wanting a cannonball since I started. It's small though, isn't it? Well, it is, I. But the, you know, you you could carry. Well, before they started making them out of iron, you could carry like fifty of them, you know. If you built like Hercules. <laughs> well, it looks like I won that one as well. So that's two zero to Pond Guru. Now we have already decided where we're going to go on the next installment of our competition and hopefully we'll be able to get some joint footage there and a little bit more scenery shots because this one was severely lacking hopefully we can get some better footage because today was awful for filming it was really terrible before i go i just want to give a little bit more information about those two artifacts that i found because coins are coins people drop them or they lose them they're not really massively interesting things. Artifacts, on the other hand, are. Just before I go, I'll give you a little bit more information on those two artifacts that I found. Because they are quite interesting. Now, on the face of it, that just looks like a rusty lump of iron. And I've actually found two of these to date. And I presume they were like a plough point or just something agricultural. But what this is, is a, a, it's a heat source for a really, really old iron. And you would have two or three of these in the open fire. When you wanted to use your iron, you take this out, you'd sit it inside the recess of your cast iron iron. That would warm up the big plate, and then you could use it for ironing. When it started to lose its effect, when it started to cool down, you'd simply flick that one out back into the open coals pick your other one out put it inside your iron and you're good to go again really good find that I like that it is just a lump of iron but it's got a story behind it and I really love finding things with a story behind them and talking of stories behind them this could possibly have an awesome story behind it this is a lead cannonball. It's 
not particularly round, but it's round enough to fly in a more or less straight line at high speed. And imagine something like that hitting you. It would go straight through you, straight through the next fella, and probably straight through two or three fellas behind them. What a projectile that is. And the reason why this one might be super special, and bear in mind it is the 200th anniversary of the Battle of Waterloo, this site where I found this cannonball used to be regularly visited by the Duke of Wellington. You'll know him as the mastermind in the Battle of Waterloo. He used to visit that place regularly. He loved his cannons, loved his guns. He may have touched this and fired this. I don't know. But what a great thing to tell somebody. Possibly touched and fired by the Duke of Wellington personally. Chances are it wasn't, but I like to think it was. I'm not going to tell you how much this weighs because I'm going to use this in a future competition or giveaway and you're going to guess how heavy this is. It is made of lead and it is damn heavy for its size. I'm not going to give this away though because this is mine. This is a lovely find. Another one crossed off my bucket list. I love finding artifacts like this that might have had a story behind them. Really love them. You're going to have to guess the weight of this in order to win something else in a future video. So keep your eyes peeled for them. There will be more metal detecting videos coming up. There won't be as many as last year because I'm trying to bring my other hobbies in as well into this channel. There will be a series of bushcraft and survival videos starting in early August of this year. I'm really looking forward to them because there's going to be things in those videos that you've never seen before. Uh, I'm really excited about them. This is going to be a great year. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. What was it called? Duke of Wellington. Oh, really? Could even be a Duke of Wellington cannonball. Find them for a bit of fun. It could have been practicing before he went to Waterloo 200 years ago. You never know. Small though, isn't it? Well, it is, aye, but the, you know, you, you could carry, well, before they started making them out of iron, you could carry like 50 of them, you know? If you built like Hercules. <laughs> That's not a cannonball. Well, yeah, it is. Nowhere near that. Well, I know, but you've got a florin though. I was, uh, and I'm silver. thinking it's silver, hey, you're no, smiling, it's, it's got to be silver. On another one of my put, <clears throat> way up into the hills, on another one of my put, permissions, positions, positions, permissions. We're going to go way up into the hills on another one of my positions, positions! I did do a very, very quick hunt there that I didn't film uh, last year with a lad called Jimmy the Horse. And I'll let you decide why he's called the horse. Yes, it is the obvious reason. I'm out to gear. Oh. Out to gear. I'm out to gear. I'm not out to gear. Not in the woods. <laughs> Maybe it's in the privacy of my own home. <laughs> Shit, man. I'll cut that bit out.